In November of 2015, there was a violent incident that came to be known as the Paris attack. And that incident was heavily televised and just a very small sample of the violence that goes on in our world every day and that there's no television for just a very heavy silence. Um, but there was a moment in at that time where there was a father who was who taught and comforted his son and um, this happened on video and so it became kind of a popular video for a while and I always remembered it because it it did uh, uh, hit me hard and um, I thought it was profound. His son was worried about the men with guns and the father said to his son, said several things, but he said, they have guns, but we have flowers. There are reasons that we kill. Everyone who kills has a reason. Unless, I know that some people kill from insanity, but that's not what I'm talking about today. Uh, I'm talking, in these videos, I'm having conversation with accountable people. And so there are many, many accountable people who kill for reasons. There's always a reason. And everyone has their reasons of their line of where they would kill or their list of reasons of why they would kill and why they wouldn't kill. And even, you know, even I have that, or I might. I mean, I haven't been tested in every situation, but, you know, maybe if my child was being extremely harmed in front of me, you know, I'm, I would, I might feel the necessity of, of killing that, uh, the, the perpetrator. So there's reasons to kill. And, and so when we, we, we say, you know, yeah, I'm going to fight them or I'm going to kill them or I'm going to, you know, hurt them or I'm going to, um, because, because, blah. And our reasons may not be the same as other people's reasons, but trust me, everyone has their reasons of why they're killing or why they would kill. And this is, this is um, killing that is justified. We justify the killing. We put it in a balance with the reason. And I'm not even challenging those justifications. Human beings are spectacular at justification. It's our, one of our favorite activities and our best talents. And so there may be justified killings like the one I just described in, in my life, it might be. But the thing is, is you can get bogged down in the swamp of justification and never get out. It is a dead end. And that's your reward. Your reward is the justification. There's no other reward from it. And so I'd like to think a little bit better of us as humanity. Violence is weak. It folds in on itself and it ends in nothing. Um, there is a story in the Book of Mormon where there was a great civilization and uh, they had many wars throughout their history. But at the very end, there was an extremely massive war and massacres and there became two great camps that would fight against each other. And in the beginning, they knew what, what they were fighting for but by the end, I think they'd forgotten and they became simply bloodthirsty. Uh, the description was that they fought all day and they slept on their swords at night. And the way that this story ended is the way that all violence uh, ends if, there's not a, if there isn't a limit to that violence. The last man living chopped off the head of the second to last man living in this story. And then the war was over. But what did he have? He had nothing. He had fields and fields of dead bodies. 
and blood on his hands. That's all he had. He had his sword. That's what he had. You know, the thing about making an enemy or naming an enemy or fighting an enemy is that if you are willing to have an enemy in your paradigm or the way that you look at the world, even if you could annihilate all of your enemies with violence, you would fill the hole with someone else because you would have a hole in your in your psyche that says enemy and you would need to fill it at all times. And again, the history of this world is full of that. The history of this of the United States is full of that. Who is our enemy? And we fill that up and the names have changed, you know, but the but the way that it works has not. We just fill in the blank. And so if you are willing to have an enemy or be an enemy to someone, you will fill that up. And pretty soon, you know, in the beginning, it'll be a stranger in a far place. But later, it'll be, you know, the, your own children or your husband or your wife, if you're willing to turn people into enemies. It takes power to have peace. That is the strong position. If you default to violence... At the very least, you lack imagination. It means you can't think of anything else to do. Or you're not um, willing to make the effort, which is called laziness. Or you don't have the courage to face guns with flowers. And this is, again, it takes a great deal of personal power to begin with peace in yourself and to repair peace between the person that's right next to you, your husband or wife, your neighbor, um, and to actually do something to make peace in a difficult situation, to think of an alternative that is um, powerful and yet effective. And it doesn't mean laying down and letting people walk all over you. You know, we have the example of Martin Luther King Jr. And I've been reading a book with my sons about him. And I, you can't imagine the kind of thought and prayer and love and very deliberate thinking, very deliberate feeling. And they acted. They didn't do nothing. They acted deliberately. They had coordinated actions and they did it over and over again. And they persisted through some suffering. And after a a long time they've met their objectives or their initial objectives because some you know the struggles still going on today but um, at the end when they had risen above when Martin Luther King Jr. and the people um, in Montgomery uh, for the bu bus boycott when they had had reached their objectives with the bus boycott they had the opportunity to put the white people under their feet. And Martin Luther King taught them not to do that. He, he didn't tell them to make them their enemy. He said, now love them and reconcile them, reconcile with them as your brother. And my point is, is that takes so much courage. That takes so much soul power. Okay? And so the peace is the powerful position and it takes energy. There's a beautiful song that I'm going to share in the description and it is called The Flower That Shatters the Stone. And so the flower that shatters the stone is our love and our integrity and our peace. There is not a way to peace. Peace is the way. That is the way. I'll see you soon.